This is the Terramaster F2 210. It's a two-bay NAS that's worth under $150, but is it any good? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name's Jonathan and this is TechWiz Time, where I help you save time and money when it comes to gaming and technology. In this video, we're gonna be having a look at the Terramaster F2 210. But first, what am I gonna cover in this video? Well, I'm gonna cover what you get for $150, and also how to set up and install the Terramaster F2 210. And I'm also gonna go over the pros and cons of this unit itself at the very end of this video. So make sure you stick around. And in saying that, if you could also subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, that would be fantastic. And even sharing this video on social media platforms would be great as well. All right, so what do you get for $150 NAS? Well, quite a lot. You get the two bays there for either three and a half inch drives or two and a half inch drives. And they're SATA drives, so either SSD or mechanical hard drives. On the back, you get two USB 3 ports, so you can expand the storage or hook up some external drives to the unit itself. And you also get a gigabit LAN port, so you've got fast transfer from and to the actual NAS itself. Now let's talk technical specs. So this little beauty here has a quad core, 1.4 gigahertz ARM 64-bit CPU inside. When it comes to RAM, it does only have one gigabyte, so it's not gonna be able to do a huge amount, but it will be able to get you off the ground especially for $150. And the other thing as well is the one gigabyte of RAM, it is non-upgradable. So unfortunately you are stuck with one gigabyte. Now the unit itself supports up to 16 terabyte hard drives. So you've got a theoretical maximum internal storage space there of 32 terabytes, excluding the system and so forth. In terms of speeds, if you put this one into RAID zero, you'll get up to 124 megabytes per second on the read and write, which is not too bad for mechanical hard drives. And in terms of file systems, this supports EXT4, which is the Linux standard, or BTRFS. All right, so with that all out of the way, let's get into setting up the Terramaster F2 210. So installing the hard drives is fairly simple. Just pull the front tab, which releases the hard drive tray. Then you can insert the hard drive face up with the connectors facing to the back of the tray. Then from underneath the tray, screw the hard drive in so it's not gonna move anywhere. Rinse and repeat for both trays, and then slide both trays back into the NAS. Push the tabs in to lock them into place and you're ready to go. So to start up the actual unit itself, what you'll need to do firstly is plug in the supplied power adapter. Once you've done that, you will also need to plug in an ethernet cable and connect that to your home network, whether that's your router, modem or switch. You just need to power on the TerraMaster NAS from the front power button and then jump onto a computer that's on your network and navigate to start.terra-master.com. This will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your NAS and also the software that you'll need to install. So the first thing you'll need to do is select your NAS from the drop-down menu. So in our case, it's the F2-210. Now to keep things simple, and instead of having to figure out what your IP address is for your Terramaster NAS, they've included some software that you download and it will automatically find the F2-210 unit on your network. So once the NAS has been found, simply click on it and then click on the login button. This will pop up an Edge browser to begin the process. So simply click on Start and then click the Next button. This will just go through some checks to make sure that the hard drives that you've installed inside the unit are okay to go. Once it reports back that they're all good, you can click on the Next button. Now you can just leave this screen as it is, so it will automatically download the TOS system and then just click the Next button. This is where a message will pop up saying that the hard drive one and hard drive two will be deleted and do you wanna continue? So as long as you're all good, just press OK to continue. This will then start the process of installing the TOS system inside the NAS itself, or actually it'll start installing it on the hard drives that you've got installed in there. This can take up to 10 minutes, so just be aware of that. Go and make a coffee and just chill out. To give you an idea with my system, it took around two and a half minutes to complete the install, excluding any rebooting time. Including the rebooting, it took about three and a half minutes, so not that long. Once the system reboots, you'll be able to set up your admin account. Now, one of the things to note here is that the username, which is admin, cannot be changed. It needs to be admin, and that's all there is to it. So unfortunately, there's no way to actually give yourself a username at this point in the process. So what you will need to do is you will need to put in your password and then confirm that password underneath. Then you can select your time zone. In my instance, I'm in the Sydney time zone, which is plus 10. Then next, in order to have complete access to your NAS, especially if you forget the password or anything like that, it's recommended that you put in an email address here 
and then hit the send code button, which will send you a code to that email address that you can confirm that there is a link there. So once you've hit that send code button, it will send you a code into your email. Copy that code and then paste it into the box there and then hit next. So on this screen, we can leave this option as create volume on a new storage pool and just click next. Now this is where we can choose the type of volume that we want to create. And you've got a couple of different options here. One of them is to create a RAID 1, which means that you will have data protection. But it also means that if you've got example here, you've got two three terabyte hard drives in here, it's going to use one of those as protection. So you're only going to have three terabytes of space available to you. But the upside of that is that you do get the protection there in case one of the hard drives fails. So if you are storing really sensitive data or stuff that you do not want to lose, then using RAID 1 is probably going to be the best option for you. So the other three options that we've got there is single disk, which means that the two three terabytes will be combined into one six terabyte drive. The next one is RAID 0, which is again combining those two hard drives into one, but also increasing the speed. So you're going to get faster read and write speeds with RAID 0. And the third option is JBOD, or just a bunch of disks. And what this means is that basically these two three terabyte hard drives in there will just be that. They'll just be two three terabyte hard drives. They won't be joined and if one hard drive fails, it does mean that the other hard drive will still be accessible. So you don't need to worry if you've got important files on one and this one fails, then you're still okay. But obviously you don't have any data protection with those three methods. So just be aware of that when you're going into it. So in my case, I'm gonna choose RAID 1 and I'll just click next. So here we can choose the file system. And in my case, I've gone with BTRFS instead of ext4 and that's purely because of the features that it has for my use case. Generally most people would just leave this as ext4 and then just click next. Actually you click confirm and once you do click confirm it will show you the stats of everything that you've just chosen there and once you're happy with that just click confirm again and that's going to start formatting the RAID or the hard drives inside the unit. Now I actually came into a problem here and I wanted to leave this in the video just so you could see it too, especially if you're an enthusiast and you might have some spare hard drives lying around. So in my case, I had two, three terabyte hard drives lying around, but they had been used in a previous system. So because they'd already been partitioned and formatted in a different format, the NAS itself didn't like that. So I got to about 27% and said that I would need to remove all those partitions on another computer. So that's exactly what I did. I removed the hard drives from the unit formatted them on a test bench that I had laying around here and then put them back into the unit and started the process again. So once I went through the process again, it completed successfully and I got to the login screen. So I used the admin username and password and then logged in and this is the screen that I got. So what you'll see on the right hand side is you'll see the statistics or the information about the unit itself like CPU, hard drive space and so forth. And then over on the left hand side, you've got all your icons there for things like applications for control panel, and the file manager itself, amongst other things. So in terms of applications, this thing has a lot on there, especially if you're a web developer or looking to get into some small server tasks. You'll see them all on the screen right now. It's even got Plex on there if you're looking to set up some sort of media server. Server, server, media server. All right, so lastly, I want to discuss the pros and cons that I feel uh, with this F210 unit. So pro number one is I've got to say the price. Now, being that this is a sub $150 two bay NAS, it's really, really affordable. And when I say sub 150, I've seen it for as low as $127 on Amazon at the moment. So depending on when you watch this video, the price may differ a little bit, but $127, even $150, that's a really great price for a two bay NAS, especially for one that offers data protection. And that's where I come to pro number two, and that is the options that it's got there for the NAS itself. So having JBOD or just a bunch of disks, uh, RAID 1 and RAID 0 options there is a really good choice for most people. Now it does only have two bays, so the data protection that it offers is only going to be RAID 1, unfortunately. But if you're, say for example, you've got two 16 terabyte hard drives in there, you're going to have 16 terabytes of space for backing up, say as an example, your photography library. Now raw photos, they can be anywhere from 20 megabytes to 100 megabytes each. So if you're doing a photo shoot and you've got a ton of photos there, even 10 photos at 100 megabytes, that's a gigabyte there. So you can imagine that's gonna chew through the hard drive space. So having that option for RAID 1 there to protect your valuable data, then yeah, to be honest, that's a really great investment right there. 
And pro number three is the applications that are available with the F2210 unit. So to be honest, if you're looking to get into web development or anything like that, this is probably the perfect unit for you because it's got everything in there that you could get started with, with WordPress, Joomla, or any of the other programming languages in there, like Python for scraping. The other thing this would be great for as well is being a cloud storage unit. So as a good example, you could use either Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, or Dropbox, and have this unit back up straight to those services. Plus also keep a local backup. So having a local backup on the F2210 and then having a cloud backup on those services, which then brings me to the cons. Now I did have a couple and these won't affect everyone, but this is just me and my personal situation. So con number one is definitely the hard drives. So if you've got spare hard drives lying around and they've already pre been pre-formatted, I should say, then you're gonna run into a problem with this particular unit. If you're using fresh hard drives straight out of the box, then you're not gonna have any issues. But if you say uh, pulling a hard drive out of a pre-formatted external case, then you might have an issue when it comes to this one here. So con number two is just, this is just my personal experience with NASA's. So with the TerraMaster F2210, you do need to install software to be able to detect where the NAS is on your network or what the IP address is. Now with other manufacturers out there, they do have a system in, in place where you basically just go to a website and it will detect it automatically and start the process. So there's no more software to install. So for most people, this isn't gonna be an issue. You've just gotta download a piece of software and start the process. For me myself, purely because I have the experience with different NASs, this was a little bit of a, an extra step that I had to take, which I wasn't expecting. So this won't be a con for everyone, it's just more of a little con for me. And the third and final con is to do with the actual fan on the rear. Now the fan protrudes quite a bit, and aesthetically you're probably not going to see it because it's at the back, but it would have been nicer if the whole unit actually went out flush to the fan itself. It would have made the unit a little bit longer all over, but it's that length anyway with the protrusion. So I don't see why it couldn't have just been taken right out to the very rear. So one last thing that I didn't talk about after the pros and cons is the materials that it's actually made of. Now I should have talked about this at the start, but I'm here now, so I might as well talk about it. So the actual base itself is metal. So it's metal all over, um, except for the front and the rear. So the front and the rear are plastic and the trays itself here are plastic as well. So it's quite durable plastic, but it is plastic nonetheless. So that's just for those people that want to know what the actual construction of the unit is instead of, you know, uh, I, I could have not discussed it, but there's going to be someone that is definitely going to ask, like, is it metal? Is it plastic? Is it all plastic? Well, yeah, that basically answers it. The, the main bulk of the unit is metal. The trays, the front and the back, uh, plastic. So if any of you guys ever used TerraMaster before, this is my first time and I've just gotten a little bit used to it. So leave me a comment down below and let me know your experiences with the TerraMaster brand. Let me know if you want me to check out any more of their products and also look at tutorials or anything like that for this channel. If you want to help support this channel, you can in three different ways. One of them is to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. Another way is to share this video on Facebook, Twitter or Reddit. And a third way is to make a small contribution on our Patreon campaign. All right, and lastly, if you've made it this far on the video, I know I always say this, but I really appreciate you watching it. I really do. I, yeah, I put a lot of time and effort into these videos. They're not just something that I've slapped together. I really try and bring something that's high quality and yeah, something that you guys are going to enjoy. So yeah, if you have made it this far on the video, I just want to say I really appreciate you watching this. Watching all the way through the video really helps this channel to grow because it shows YouTube that people are interested in everything that I've got to say. So with that said, thanks very much for watching this video, guys. And as always, imagine, learn, create.